So today we're going to look at this Fluke 731B. Now I've shown this previously in the mailbag and did some testing on it and stuff like that and verified it and it does actually work. But it's got a few things that need fixing up on it. One of these things is this. This needs to go. Don't want that anymore. So what they actually done is draw a hole for the side here and they hooked up to an external battery. The problem is when this is powered off AC these also become live. So if you touch them together you're shorting out the power supply. Not a great thing. And it's also got some damage on the back. You can see this has been impacted here. Probably see it's all dented. So I want to strip this down and, and straighten that up and get that all nice again as well. And then we'll do more testing on it. Maybe I'll do some longer term testing and chuck it might add an after jet multimeter and see what happens. But uh, yeah, I thought it was a good start. We'll play with this thing. So I've just taken those two screws out. And there's the inside and there's that wire. And there's a wire there which I need to do something with. What I think I'm probably going to do is just cut it off the posts here. This seems like quite a nice wire. It seems like it's Teflon or something. So I think I'm going to cut it off the post right close to those posts so I can still see what the polarity is. And then I'll replace that wire when I put a new battery pack inside it. We've got to check the capacitor and things like that. Yep. So it's almost a shame, but let's do it. These need to go. There's a hindrance dealt with next. So I just lifted off the metal shield from over here. Let's have a little look in there and see what's going on. So got a tantalum in there, nothing to worry about, and you've got some precision resistors, which is kind of what I expected. So yeah, nothing to change in there, nothing to work on, so that can go back on again. I'm going to leave that alone, not going to touch it, but I just want to see what was inside that cover first. That's what's in there, in case you ever care. LN308 down there, something else over here. It's like 1979, I can see a decode on there. Right, let's take this bottom cover off. Same deal, a couple of screws it will lift off. This one did have the complication of the wire going through there, but now that's gone, this should come off a lot easier. Get with this awful grommet thing. And there's the bottom of the board. So I've got this capacitor, which looks like it's probably been changed already. I'm going to check it, see if it looks okay. I mean, I'm tempted just to change it anyway. It's only one cap. Uh, it was at 220 microfarad, 100 volt. So I could change it quite easily without much stress. Now, because I've got to take all this apart, this is a tricky bit, because I've got to take all this lot out to take this panel off. I really want to take this panel off to panel beat it. I mean, it's taking these stickers off the sides and potentially damaging nose or whatever. It's a shame. It would be nice to not have to do that. But I think I'm going to have to. Or leave it bent. And that's not something that's going to happen. With a bit of care there, I've managed to get my little spudger here down the side of the sticker. Lifted those corners up, got those screws undone, and I've just left them wedged in there to hold these bits of sticker up. Rather than taking it completely off. There might be a third one I have to do. I'm not quite sure. But... Um, There might be, actually. That doesn't seem to want to move still. There may be another one under there somewhere. Yeah, actually, I can feel it right there. And there is a screw head there. So, yeah, I've got one more to take out. I might have to take that sticker right off completely. Uh, anyway, I'll do the same thing on the other side once I can figure out exactly how I'm going to do that. All the colours actually marked on the posts as well, which is nice. It means I can unplug these and plug them back on again based on colour. Nice and easy. Of course, I'll still make a note. Actually, I think I'll make a note now. So there's a note. Blue, purple, white, yellow. Green, orange, brown. Red. And black. Top to bottom, each side. And over here. So black, white, and green. Well, I had to basically take the sticker mostly off. I had to use a bit of IPA, get underneath there with that. Because it turns out there's four screws under there. So, yeah. Anyway, 
that's that but I've got to do the other side now don't like to disturb the stickers because they're factory originals like I don't really want to mess with them but I have no choice all right so I've got the back panel off these two here especially these are really hard to get off they were really stuck on there I'm not sure if it's a sign of arcing or whether it's just purely bad luck the other ones all well, these ones come off just fine these ones are really hard to get off I really struggle to get them to move so um I just started stripping back one of these thinking maybe it's actually not a connector but maybe it's soldered on um, so I'm going to put some heat shrink on that but uh, now I've got to figure out how to get this stuff off but unfortunately this is riveted on so I could drill those out if I needed to and replace them with bolts that's certainly an option got to get this off I may need to redo this connection here because I need to get obviously this fuse holder out transformer is actually fairly straight in there it's actually looking like it, maybe it's okay so I may not need to move the transformer it's just on a couple of studs, so I think it might be out of the way enough for me to work on this without messing with that part. So I think I really just need to get these two pieces out. So I've just taken the nut off. So then we've got a locking washer. Then we've got the connection. Then we've got another washer. Nice thick one. And there's the post. That's that piece off. Now I've got to get this piece off. I'm not even sure this fuse hole is any good because I, I can't actually undo it. <laughs> I may have to replace the whole thing anyway. So there's the fuse holder out. And actually it's broken so yep I need to replace this. I do actually have spares so that's fine. I'll just uh, salvage this wire here because obviously I need the connector. And I'll replace that fuse holder with a new one. Alright so I've panel beat that now. That's pretty straight. It's much better than it was anyway. I found a replacement fuse holder. Looks straight to me. Let's refit this piece and um, then I can do the wiring on that again to replace the original. Alright, so that's all assembled now, ready to go back on. I've done all this. I've actually put heat shrink on these terminals, these main 240 volt ones. Um, this heat shrinking to help protect the chance of, well, potentially touching things and getting a zap. So I thought if I do that, it'd be a little bit safer. I'm also wondering about maybe I should put something on these ones. So I think maybe it'd be an idea to put some on these two. It might make it safer. I think it's an idea, what do you reckon? These are the primary side here. Looking at the colours. Yes, these are the ones I want to cover. Apart from the earth, the earth can stay open. So I'm going to heat shrink these. And it should be good then. Stick one on there like that. This makes it a little bit safer. one and I'll repeat that for the rest. So now I'm going to put this back together again, make sure I've got it the right way up. I do. Now to put it on the left side, which is the side that is, I think it's this one. I think this is the left side. So I need to sit in there and I need to get these screws back in place. It's tricky because I've been trying to preserve the sticker as much as I can. So I'm just going to get them in place but not to do them right up yet because obviously I need to make sure that it all lines up properly on both sides and stuff like that. So, Although these are countersinks so they should really be right but I'm just going to try and do it kind of right and just do the other side like that. Now it's the other side. Let's prop this up so I don't mess up that sticker. Stick it back down. Hopefully, it's not too badly messed up. It's not looking too bad actually. It's not perfect, but uh, it's now start reattaching the wires. I've already done these ones. I've got to do obviously the primary side and then the outputs on the secondary side. Right, so also it's gone around all these connectors and just checked how tight they are. I found a couple which are a little bit loose, so I'll just tighten those up slightly. There's a couple of like, fingers on the side that sort of sandwiches the pins, they go down. So I've just pushed those fins on the side in very slightly tighter and then reseated them. I also use some deoxid gold on all the pins and um, use, put on all of them to try and clean them all up and reseated every single pin. Just to ensure they're all good and will be for some time. Now I'm going to check this capacitor out. 
Pretty sure it's not supposed to rock like that. Yeah. I need a bit of adjustment, I think. There we go, that's better. Slightly. Hmm. <sighs> Chassis problems, great. So I just tested that capacitor. It's a 220 microfarad, 100 volt. Look at that, exactly 220 microfarad. 0.3 ohms. That seems fine to me, I might leave it alone. So normally I would replace the capacitor, but it's like someone has already replaced that cap, and like I said, it looks absolutely fine to me. So, I mean, it could have been replaced a month ago. It seems fine, so I'm going to leave it alone. What brand is that cap anyway? I'm sure. Can't see. 85 degree rated, but, eh, you know, it measures fine. It's not really worth it. It's a Nichicon. It's a Nichicon cap, so, yeah, it's a good brand. I'll leave it alone. So I'm now at the point where I can put the batteries in. Now, I've got a choice of two different battery styles. I've got these flat ones six cells. I've also got the block style six cells. So I could put either one or even a combination of both in there. Now it needs to be 14.4 volts. So these are 7.2 volt packs, nickel metal hydride, and these are 3,500 milliamp hours. So these only just arrived today. I've been waiting for these to turn up so I can finish the project. The question is how do I put them in here? I mean that way they kind of fit. Might no nah, not quite don't quite fit like that. So that's not an option. That way could go. Then I've got to stick them side. I've got to stick them one above the other. Or with this style, again, I've got to stick them like that. Which is probably how I'm going to go and have them like that, stuck to the side. I could stick them to the bottom, but I'm not going to because if you open a case up and you open the bottom case, they'll be stuck to it and you end up putting the wires and what have you. So I'm going to stick them to the side panel here. And that'd be the best way of mounting them. So I think I'm going to go with this style. Which is why I've got two different versions because I wasn't quite sure which one's going to fit best or how I'm going to do them. So I think I'll go with these ones. So what I'm doing is I'm putting the pins from these connectors that come with these batteries. And I'm actually going to heat shrink over this one because what I've got, I've got the original post stand here. Which the original battery wired onto. And these will actually fit on these posts really well. So I'm actually just going to heat shrink this pin, not the red one. That can go on the red post. And on the other battery I'll do the same thing on the black one. And that can then go to the black post. So I'll just push on that way, and then I'll probably maybe use a male header pin and just join these together or something. I might just take them both out and then join them together with a male header pin and heat shrink. Something like that. But that's what the plan is. But first, before I take this other pin out, I've got a heat shrinkers. So don't accidentally touch them together and start a big fire. Don't want that to happen. So let's put some on there. Right. One done. Now I was trying to use these, but there's no real benefit to using these in this case because they won't actually go down inside the back of the socket like I kind of need to. They don't really go in. That's what I'm trying to do anyway. Like that. Now heat shrink this one. Possibly. I might do as different. I could just sold them together. Or if I if I put a male pin between them. There's a risk it'll be a dodgy connection. Let me just think about this. Let me get some header pins, see how good it fit it is. Alright, so I've heat shrunk that one. So I've got negative, positive, and now I'm going to heat shrink this joint. So the header pin is actually fitting just fine. It's okay. I think it's probably tight enough. I'm not 100% sure. I'm actually tempted to solder it just to make sure it's got a decent connection. Just to make it slightly better. I mean, I'm tempted to. Seriously tempted. I will. I'm going to solder it. What does it matter? In this case, I'll cut it off again. So it's soldered on. That's definitely not going to go anywhere now. Put a shrink over the top. Let's heat shrink it. Okay, that's a battery pack made. Well, it says the back, that's the battery pack assembled, really to be stuck in. I've got some double sided tape down this side, obviously they're stuck together. This is quite a strong tape, so I'm basically going to do is just sit it in the bottom of the box there and rest it on the bottom. Now, what I'm going to attempt to actually do is put some more foam on the bottom here because it does have these nickel strips. Vibration shouldn't really be an issue and rubbing, I think it would probably be alright, but I think as a good idea, it'd be a uh, safety precaution to put something on the bottom there as well so I might just put a couple of strips on the bottom 
just to space it off the bottom casing. It's not really a big deal, but this won't be double sided, it'll just be the foam itself. I'm not going to actually stick it down as such, just to create a gap, just as a wise precaution, an extra layer of insulation, just so it's not actually resting against the bottom itself. Okay, so I'm just going to basically rest it on the bottom case, stick it to the side, and I can plug those wires in once it's attached. Sound like a plan? I think so. Right, I've got the adhesive peeled off. Let's make sure the casing is definitely pushed all the way down. I don't want to misalign it. There you go, that wasn't quite down there. I haven't put the screws back in, you see. Slot this in. Move it over to the side panel, and that should be it. Give it a squeeze. A bit of a wiggle, 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 yeah, as Dave would say. Just wiggle it a little bit. Right, now we can take the bottom casing back off again so we can access it easier. Red wire and black wire. Black wire is the one that goes to the top. So put that one first because that's going to be the harder one. Now, because these were soldered previously, they are a little bit thicker than before, which actually gives it a bit of a, a good bind, actually. Helps it slightly. And so I've got to pull the rib on off. Okay. They are on. I probably need to do something with this wire here, tuck that out of the way. All right, let's see if it turns on. It does. Battery says OK. Excellent. That seems to be working. Now that hole that had the ugly grommet through it before with the wires, I've obviously put a rubber grommet in there now to seal that up so it's all nice now. I've already plugged it in, let's turn it on. Make sure the thing still looks like it's working okay. Yes it is, good, excellent. So I'm going to leave this on power for a while, leave it powered up. Because that will then fully recharge these batteries because obviously I don't know what charge state these batteries are actually in. It's just trickle charged off the main supply on this thing. So I know that part was working because I was measuring that before when I was doing initial testing on it. I can leave that to charge up. You have to leave it in the on state to do that. It only charges when it's on. I think I might need to do some calibration on this because the, the 10 volt looks basically bang on, right? I was doing testing, 10 volt on this basically agreed my PDV is too many. That also said 10 volt and that was looking really good. The 1 volt, however, looks a bit off. That's down very slightly and the delta E zeroing isn't quite zero. It goes below zero. I did try tweaking a bit, it's sitting slightly different, so it's, it's actually sitting slightly high. So I think I need slight tweaks just to set the zero point in the delta E and set the one volt range. And I think we should be good after that. I wanted to get on the battery first in case the battery is affecting the supply rail voltage, which may then affect the upper voltages. It's possible. So I wanted to do that bit first, get that out of the way. And I'll come back later on and do some checks on this and just do a verification because I've got my eight and a half digit multimeter over there, which I can use, which I can run a calibration on before I set this up on it. Because I've got the 10 volt reference I've already got there. I'm going to do a calibration with that 10 volt reference, set the 10 volt on this, make sure it's exactly right though. I think it is basically bang on. It's very slightly high, almost insignificant amount, and the 1 volt was definitely out by a bit. Obviously it needs to be on for quite a period of time first, so I'll probably leave this to charge up and everything. Initially on my bench, just make sure there's no problems before I put it over there in my rack, and then I can pop the top off and tune it on the rack. But I need to do those tests on the 8.5 digit meter once that's all warmed up as well. I haven't got time to do that tonight, I haven't got enough time because it's already 7pm, so it's too late to start doing that kind of stuff today. But later on, I can do it, you know, because you need to have a few hours warm up at least, really, you know, at least four hours. And it also stacks on top of my other unit I've got there. Is it 510A, was it? The AC standard? Yeah, it's like. Don't forget to subscribe over there if you're already subscribed. Video's down there in the playlist in the description and also on the screen, hopefully. And there's a Patreon support link over there, which you can use to help support the channel. Donate, like, even a couple of dollars a month, it all helps. It helps you to buy things like this to do videos about. Test equipment's getting really expensive to buy. The next thing I'm looking at buying is probably about $5,000, to give you some idea. This was purchased with Patreon money though, this wasn't too expensive, so I'd saved up for a while and I managed to buy this with Patreon money, and YouTube membership money combined, so that was useful. So, Patreons helped me to buy this, that's great. Catch you later.